Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time we'll discuss the argument from the meaning of life. Premise 1. If God doesn't exist, human life has no real meaning. Premise 2. Human life does have a real meaning. Conclusion. Therefore, God exists. Now, let's look at the evidence for the premises. Premise 1. If human beings are created by God, then God is quite capable of giving human life a meaning and a purpose, just by virtue of the fact that he created us to have a purpose. The only other alternative explanation for the meaning of human life is that people give their own lives meaning. However, that's not literally true. People may decide what to do with their lives, or even what specific shape they want their life paths to take, but that doesn't make it the actual meaning of their lives. It's not possible to change the actual meaning of something without changing the thing itself. For example, the purpose of a log is to be burned in a fire, cut, whittled, or shaved into a structure. Once this happens, it ceases to be a log and becomes something new, like a chair, or a doll, or ashes, with a completely new and different purpose. We human beings, though, aren't able to do this to ourselves. We can educate ourselves, increase our muscle power through training, learn to perform any number of useful skills, but in the end, these things only increase our abilities. We don't cease to be human and become something else. Therefore, the real meaning of our lives isn't really changed by this. Also, if these things don't change the meaning of our lives, then neither does a single decision on our part, which doesn't even change our abilities the way training and learning do. Because of this, we know that, at present, human beings can't change the meaning of their own lives. Only the one who made us what we are can do that. However, if a set of impersonal and or random conditions was responsible for our lives, that also wouldn't give us meaning. That's because meaning has to do with what a thing is intended to do, and random, impersonal things don't have intentions. So if God doesn't exist, our lives have no meaning. Premise 2. There's quite a bit of evidence that our lives do have meaning. Most of it is found in just the ordinary experiences of our lives. We know that it's wrong to murder a person, no matter how many rainforests are saved by doing so. We know that it's wrong to steal someone's wallet, regardless of how much it may serve our purposes. We know to try to prevent human suffering and starvation as much as possible, because there's something about human beings which is meaningful. However, perhaps the strongest evidence for the meaning of human life is found in loved ones, particularly children. Almost no one wants to admit that the very lives of their own children, or of their spouse or significant other, is utterly purposeless and random. Therefore, our experiences tell us that human life has meaning, and without some equally good reason to think that it doesn't have meaning, we should conclude that it does. Conclusion as long as both premises are true, the conclusion follows from them. This seems like a good argument. What kinds of objections could be brought against it? Objection 1. My own life is meaningless because nothing ever goes right in it. Reply. I don't think that's true, but even if it were provable, it wouldn't disprove the argument. As long as anyone's life has real meaning, God must exist to provide that real meaning. Objection 2. No one is ever really happy, so nobody's life has any real meaning. Reply. Again, I don't really agree, but even if it were true that no one is ever really happy, it wouldn't follow that their lives don't have meaning. After all, a pencil is never really happy, but it has a real meaning, to be used for writing or drawing. If the purpose of human life is something other than being happy, this objection just doesn't work. It doesn't work anyway, however, since just because human life has a purpose, that doesn't mean that we necessarily fulfill that purpose by our choices. Our unhappiness might be due to our own actions in many cases, and that's just not a weakness in this argument. So it follows that God is the best explanation of the existence of a real meaning to human life, which is a good reason to believe that God exists. Next time... Can value teach us anything about God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.